Hello everybody, Mr. Fact Dotum here. On one of my last videos I did a six month reflection on where I'm up to with my loco uh, from, my, from when I began it, six months on. And in, at, the, at the end of that video uh, I mentioned that I was going to make a start on a few of the parts for the wheels. I've shown you me do all the wheels and everything uh, in a previous video. But I was going to move on to a few other items that I wasn't going to go into great detail because it's it's pretty much basic turning, basic drilling, basic hacksawing and basic filing. So where, where I've got up to now then is I made a start on the crank pins and because I'm doing a meter made with three, we, three axles, six wheels, I've got to make Two of those top ones, four of these coupling ones, and two of these for the return crank. And I've actually done them to this profile. You can do an alternative profile here. I've done a little undercut of approximately one and a half thou in the centre where it fits in the wheel. So that I could have a tight fit on, on the outer extremities of the locating peg. And then leave a little bit for Loctite in the middle. So that's the method I've, I've done them. Uh, this is, I've made four of these tight. This is not actually fitted in yet. It's just, it's just uh, there so I don't lose it in my wheel. But I've done four of those and as you can see it's just basic simple turning so I've done four of those and then I've done two of these these are these are the double ones for the driving wheels with the double journal on. So there's two of those. So they're they're complete now and it like I said it's just it's just basic turning that. Then I moved on to the return crank and made two of these. That's this drawer in here. And I used a bit of three quarter by three sixteenths flat bar, bright drawn bar, and I've just made it to the shape on the drawing. You can either mill or saw and file a slot in it. And then these crank pins here, which are the, these little ones over on the drawing here, they're just a a tight press fit into the return crank up to a shoulder. I have put some little oil grooves in these. It doesn't tell you to do that, but because something's running on this, I just thought it'd be uh, make it better to have a, a, a couple of grooves in for for oil to stay in, stay in. So I've got my pins in. I've I've not got my bolts sewn off to length yet. I'll do that later. Same with my sellock pin that goes right through. I've left that standing proud because I've got to take that out once this is in my wheel and locked tight it in and, and the lock tight's gone off. I'll have to take the return crank off. So I'll just explain uh, I'm I'm about ready for fitting these into my wheels now, they've got to be locked tighted in and left for 24 hours then I've got to peg them so to put these in my wheels I've got to make a little jig you can make this jig out of any piece of flat steel or I've actually used I've actually used a bit of fiberglass for mine because it's easy to cut and I've made it to that sh to them dimensions there so this is the return crank setting jig and this is the setup we're going to use it on here to set the 
return crank at 180 degrees from the crank pin through the centre of the wheel. That's why you need this jig apparently. So the the only other thing you need is you'll have to make a an imitation axle. I might have to zoom out for you to see this. I'm doing this in my milling machine, you don't have to do it in your milling machine, it's the only space I had available, you can do it on your bench. But I've got this piece of bar and I've turned on the end, the diameter, uh, imitating my axles, so my wheels just slide on. And you've got to do that because you need approximately, I'll tell you exactly, not approximately. You need inch and a quarter sticking through your wheel, protruding through. Right, I've moved over to an end shot now. So I've got me, me axle in my vise, with me, with it protruding through the wheel, approximately inch and a quarter here. So if you're going to do this in your vise on your bench, you'll just have to do it exactly the same as me. I'm, I'm just doing it in my milling machine. Then you've got to get some packers to get you up to the height where your, where your jig is going to rest under the d lower diameter of your axle. The jig, I'm going to call the middle bit the lower part of the jig, this piece the mid, mid part and this piece the high part. Lower, mid, high. So you get your return crank and I may not have mentioned this, so I will mention it now. You've got to draw a centre line through both the holes in your return crank, a centre line, and then carry the centre line on down the thickness of the material on the end. I don't know if you can see that. It's not might not be very clear on camera. So centre line straight through the middle of the return crank and then continue it down the thickness of the material because that bit there, that's your centre line, is going to line up with the highest part of the jig so you put your crank pin in and I'm, I'm learning this as I'm telling you now so I'm not I'm not a professional at this, I'm just learning as I'm going along here, reading book and, and showing you how it's done, it, how the book's telling you to do it. So I've got my crank pin in and I'm going to rotate my wheel now so that the journal on the crank pin is going to rest on the mid section of the jig there. And then you hold that down with your hand while you turn the crank pin round to line the centre line up on your return crank with the highest part of the jig. And then once you're happy that that's set right, you can take it all to pieces, clean your parts up, because this is your practice run. Get some Loctite on it and then do it for real with some Loctite. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to just do everything I've shown you there uh, with some Loctite on. Then once I've got my Loctite on and I've done both the, both the wheels, the driving wheels, I'm going to take the return crank off the crank pin because I need to get access then to the axle. So first of all, when I've got the return crank off the pin, I'm going to, and the, and the Loctite's gone off tomorrow. I'm going to peg this crank pin from the back and put a peg in it so it so it can't rotate. Belt and brace it. And the reason you've got to take your return crank off because when you put your wheels on your real axles for real, you can see this return crank's in the way, and I want to 
lock tight my wheels onto my axle and also peg my wheels onto my axle from this side so that's why I'm taking this return crank off then once that's all set and your wheels are on you can put your return crank back on it just clamps with that bolt and then there's a a roll pin goes straight through the middle right so I'm going to continue with this for real now and uh, I'll catch you on my next video, so thanks for watching, uh, bye for now then.